Hello and welcome to the podcast where good facts... Oh, good I facts. Know. Good facts are awarded. You don't have a facts, Warren. <laughs> good facts are awarded here, Ryan, and bad lies are punished. But will we detect the lies? This is what's the fact. They'll never detect mine, ever. <laughs> uh, my name is Ryan Whittle. This is Warren Robertson. And thanks so much for joining us. We've got uh, a delightful um, topic today. It's fun. It's yeah, about I think drama. It's, I mean, it's it's fun in a way that like terribly knife edge kind of trauma is fun, no. because the, the the topic is famous court cases. Famous court cases. Yeah. and I don't know about you, but I found when when kind of researching this topic and looking at this topic, I could have fallen off the edge of the knife at, at many points because it's a lot of dark subject matter that comes it up is, in in man. famous court cases. Eh? Like it's it not. Is. It's not all fun and games. And in today's world, it's just so much televised. It's not just Judge Judy, you know. It's not just yeah. paying away, paying the vet bill because he uh, removed exactly. And while some of it is really dogs. hilarious, see Oscar Pistorius weeping openly, my lady, oh, my lady. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also like it's terrible. What happened to the victims and all yes. that sort of stuff? Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, brutal, brutal stuff. But, but I'm hopeful, Ryan. I think we, I think we've probably found some good stuff you've probably found a lot of lies Am I, um I? no not so much actually you what, said what, what, knowingly <laughs> what i'm enjoying about this this week's podcast is it's all coming out of your brain you've got absolutely zero notes because you deleted them accidentally like a moron techno is from the devil uh, technology, <laughs> technology things <laughs> and yeah i had a document saved and i emailed myself didn't save didn't save this episode stuff but i remember it because because of the drama, <laughs> the drama. I'm ready. I'm actually. I'm like a, okay. I'm, I'm like a Are horse ready to bolt. Okay, all right, all right. I tell you what. Then you must definitely go first. Guess what, what my first court case is about. Guess. Uh, O.J. Simpson. No. Okay. But equally big. Maybe the trial of the century so far. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> oh, versus God, I was about to Johnny say. versus Amber. Now there's been a lot of stuff subsequently after the trial and suddenly it's gotten really weird yeah, really I dark know. really dark is what it's gotten Ryan I hope this is a hilarious fact this because is, it's a hell of an opening that, it's a strong funny. opening this one but um, a, a, a great turning point testimony in 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 the Johnny versus Amber trial was uh, Morgan Tremaine and he was the doorman at the um, apartment block where they no, lived. No, Ryan, Ryan, hang on. Can I just pause you here sure. for a second? Morgan Tremaine sounds like the doorman in a in a like noir detective novel. Like Morgan Tremaine is not a real doorman in a in a real case. Like this is bullshit. Like just because you deleted your notes, there's no reason to make up people's names. No, no, Morgan Tremaine. He he was the doorman. Okay, all right. And at the apartment where where they ha- had an apartment. <laughs> like going anywhere well so in the world. <laughs> They've got about two dozen apartments. This is going, uh, and uh, but but uh, the night before she filed for divorce, that's when uh, he witnessed uh, her going up uh, the elevator with James Franco the night before she filed oh, for I divorce. See. So that that was his testimony. That was old Morgan Tremaine. I'm not entirely certain that's relevant. I think everybody slept with James Franco. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not entirely certain, Ryan, that I haven't slept with James Franco. <laughs> and now that I I look back on it, I may have slept with James Franco. I definitely didn't sleep with Elon Musk, though. I'll tell you, because that was the other one she was accused of sleeping. With. Yes. I, even if he gave you a lot of. I mean, no, no, no. I'm not saying I wouldn't. Oh, Elon, I'm just saying you call haven't. Me, call me. Yeah. <laughs> call him. Yeah, yeah, call him. Give me your sponsor. Uh, yeah, yeah no, call me, call me, Ellen. I'm, I'm ready. Um, yeah. Especially given that I just realized his name you is Ellen. You might have even his played him in rugby. You were at Saints. He was at Pretoria Boys. Did you not play him in rugby? I mean, if we did, we lost incredibly badly. <laughs> 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 we, we did not win against Pretoria Boys. I'll tell you that much. Um, is that your fact? Yeah, because yeah. Because Morgan Tremaine is, yeah. is not a character out of a out of some sort of 1920s detective novel and is in fact a a real doorman. Mm. Saw James Franco and Amber going up the night before she filed for divorce. I mean, you know, I reckon the night before you file for divorce, you've already given up, right? Like you're already at that point where you're like, I don't give a fuck about this this asshole anymore. Um, I watched it like 
Every day, not every day, the trial. It's all the highlights. <laughs> Watch at least three highlights videos. I mean, your boss is thrilled he's paying you a salary right now, right? I'm pretty sure that's how this works. This is my um, lunch hour, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, why not? If you're insistent that he's a real person, sure. I mean, you say, but hang on, hang on. You say that this was a turning point kind of key moment. I can't imagine that the night before divorce with James Franco is, is a key moment. You see, but there were, the issue was uh, the infidelity was a bit of an issue in the trial and stuff. So I see, I see. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, fine. Uh, fine. It's true. It's true. Morgan Tremaine is not <laughs> like some made-up character from a young young adults uh, series about the apocalypse. <laughs> he is in fact a doorman of Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Right? Okay, I'm, I'm prepared to believe it. Let's do it. Ryan, if you open with another lie, I swear I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it, Ryan. I'm warning you now. <laughs> it was Nancy Drew's boyfriend in the in the Phantom Mammoth. <laughs> Phantom of... No, I'm joking. It's not. It's not... Ma- no, I could have believed that. That I could have believed. He was in the trial, but he wasn't the doorman at the apartment that saw her go up the elevator with James Franco. Which with the footage, there's yeah. actually footage of them getting in the elevator so together. No, no, he was uh, the guy who worked for TMZ. Do you know TMZ? It's this big celeb gossip. Oh, he was the he was the guy who in the end made fun of um, Amber's lawyer, where she was like, he... "Oh, you're just doing this for for, for fame," and he was like, uh, "And you?" <laughs> 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 yeah. So he claimed that he got a tip off to be at a courthouse and photograph her coming out i think she was laying an assault charge and they were even tipped off to you know it's controversial in the light of the news that's emerging and i but tipped off to photograph a certain side of her face maybe that's not controversial if she's saying this is what happened yeah this look at my eye i'm gonna turn right so, is it is it all this whole famous court cases episode is not all gonna be circumstantial evidence Anson. based on TMZ journalists is it this is um the my first g- fact is is around uh it, it's a, it's it's the defense's witnesses that's the first fact <laughs> then the, the, the prosecution's witnesses is the second fact oh good okay yeah, the, no, cuz i, I the mean the whole array of the of the Johnny as much number. belief as i want to put in a TMZ journalist I, I must be honest the word fact is not anywhere Near that publication in general, yeah. he 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 his job was to dispatch the f- photographers, and he claimed that he got a tip off. Otherwise, how else would they know? Oh, God. yeah, exactly. That's what he said. So you know what my favorite like paparazzi type of snapshot fact is is that for something like six months, Daniel Radcliffe wore the exact same clothes every single day. Because he knew that paparazzi couldn't sell new photos of him every day if he was wearing the same clothes. Because editors would just say, "No, this is him in the same clothes as yesterday." Okay. Yeah. So he. he That's got, awesome. Yeah. So, so then they all gave up, kind of following him around because they were like, "Oh, like I can't sell this because they look like old photographs." That that is a good paparazzi fact. Um, good. Before, all right. Before I, you start with your fact, what 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 Woodstock beer are you drinking? Oh, uh, I'm drinking the hazelnut brown ale, which, oh, which is a favorite of ours. Yeah, I got the vice. Good, yeah. good stuff. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Woodstock. These are they're, they're special beers. We appreciate them. Love them. Um, all right. So mine is a totally different first fact, right? Like I, I Deet said, famous court cases, and my brain immediately, like yours, it went to kind of celebrities and you know O.J. Simpson trial, Michael Jackson, and these Ooh. sorts of like insane kind of court cases and then i thought to myself no i'm gonna open from an alternative kind of angle so what i've got is a trial called from 1996 called leonard versus pepsico incorporated and this this might sound like you don't know about it right like it might Mm. sound like it's not famous enough for this particular podcast but wait until I, I tell you about it so what it is is that john lennon uh, john lennon john <laughs> leonard john <laughs> leonard not john Lennon. john <laughs> leonard famously sued the giant pepsico company for false advertisement because in the summer of 1996 they ran a comparative ad campaign between themselves and coca-cola oh. and the tagline was refreshingly different and oh. John Leonard went to court and he claimed false advertisement because he said, you don't know Coca-Cola's recipe. How can you claim that you are refreshingly Jeepers. different? 
Jesus. And he sued them for it, and that's my fact. Okay. Did are you saying John Leonard worked for Coke? No, he worked. For, he was a separate individual. Oh, he, but, was, but he was. He was saying, he was saying consumer, "Oh, you're trying to draw me." He's like, "You're trying to draw me into buying your shit by lying to me." You can't do this. He took him to court. Yeah. Um, no. I, 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 that doesn't sound feasible. What does sound feasible was there was comparative advertising. Oh, there still is. There still is in I America. Thought, I, I thought it's you're not allowed to anymore. No, no, no. In America, you are absolutely allowed to do comparative advertising. Can you advertising. go? Coke sucks. Drink Pepsi. Can you still do that yeah, sort yeah. of in, thing? Yeah, in, in the rest of the world, you can't. In, 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 for example, South Africa, you have to be a lot more circumspect. You remember those adverts that like Mercedes did that yes. thing about driving up Chapman's Peak? This woman went over the, mm. over the thing and she <laughs> smashed at the bottom of Chapman's Peak and she survived. And this is how safe America is. And then Mercedes released an advert where they showed their car driving oh, quickly. Yeah, mm. BMW, oh, sorry, BMW. Yeah, driving quickly around uh, Chapman's Peak and they said, it beats the bends, beats the, the bend. bends, Ooh. not the bends, <laughs> the bends. Yeah. Yes. So then that's that's the kind of comparative advertising you can get away with in South Africa, um, but but in America you can straight up be like you can have Bill Cosby out there, and they did. <laughs> they had all Bill Cosby out there being like. Mm. <laughs> Let me, uh, if I'm if I'm gonna drug a woman. <laughs> Anyways, so then, uh, yeah, so, so okay. this is this is this big trial. So so it's still, yeah, comparative advertising is not right. not, not, well, not an issue. Well, you know, here. Pepsi also sued them, um, and you're saying false advertising because how do you know Coke's recipe, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so how can you different. say you're refreshingly different? Yeah. She's, wow, what an interesting scenario. I wonder, I wonder, I, I'm so curious to find out because I'm in the marketing game myself, my day job. So... You gotta be so careful what you say. I'm gonna say it's true. He's got a he's got a he's got a right. He's got a right because it's comparative is different. You know, you you can still say they're crap for this reason. But if it's false, it's false, and that's still bad. Even in under comparative advertising. Yeah. So I'm gonna say, yes, your fact's true. Okay, so I just made that whole story up. Wow. There was a case, Leonard versus PepsiCo Incorporated. Yeah. But it's for something even more insane. Which this is this is the one this is the true story of the case of Leonard versus PepsiCo Incorporated. Um, nineteen ninety six. PepsiCo nineteen ninety six. They ran a they ran a promotion where they gave you Pepsi points for for buying different Pepsi products, and then with your Pepsi points you could you could cash them in to purchase merchandise. You know shirts and. And lanyards, probably, because it's always fucking lanyards. What do people use a fucking... Oh, lanyards. use a fucking oh, lanyard stop for? stop it, PR people. Just <laughs> yeah, stop yeah. it. PR people are just filling the, the waste oh. dumps of the world with lanyards. I don't know what they're supposed to be for. What we're supposed to... Anyway, but, yeah, so you could you could, try, you could check in your points for these, these things. And then you could also buy points for 10 cents each. And then at the end of the ad, as a joke, they had a kid in a, in a Harrier jump jet... And and he was like, and they said for seven million points you can get a Harrier jump jet, and John Leonard worked out that ten cents a point means at seven hundred thousand dollars he could have a twenty three million dollar Harrier jump jet, and he bought it, and he paid for the 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 points to the seven million points, and he was like, give me my jump jet, and Pepsi was like, no, that was a joke. <laughs> like we just we were clearly fucking with you, and John Leonard took them to court. And uh, and he lost. <laughs> <laughs> he lost because uh, the lawyers managed to persuade the judge. They were like, that was clearly a joke, that we had a little kid in a jump jet. That's ridiculous. Like, it's clearly not a part of the actual offer. Um, but, yeah, so so he landed up losing. Yeah, he. I mean, to my mind, he should have been given a $23 million Jump jet, like you know. Uh, in but his what... lawyers are dicks, eh? His yeah. lawyers, his lawyers were like, they might, they should have said, I don't, I don't think you've got a very strong chance of winning, <laughs> but we'll bill you nonetheless. I mean, I think they should have given him a fucking jump jet. I would like to see <laughs> John Leonard flying a jump jet. Like in modern terms, that's about thirty eight million dollars is what he would have won. But yeah, like and I'm Pepsi I'm... only available in these three states across the U.S. Yeah, you know, you so know what I love. Close our factory. <laughs> Sell the land. Yeah. You know what I love about John Leonard? This is my kind of asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 
I absolutely. But you said. Yeah, I could absolutely see myself doing that. Like, he spent $700,000 buying the points to get this $23 million <laughs> jump jet. I mean, I'm pretty sure what he did was he bought it thinking to himself, they will come to me and they'll offer me $1.2 million to go away. You know, they'll give me my 700000 back and another half million and I'll make a sweet half million and I'll walk on this. And then they didn't. They were just like, no, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, but my $700,000. I don't want shirts and lanyards. I want a fucking, I want a jump jet. And then they were like, oh, well, see you in court, asshole. And they saw him in court and they won. And, you know. He's I like mean, girl that's... number two from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the one with the ponies, who whose dad bought, <laughs> who bought so many boxes of Willy Wonka bars. And then got his factory workers to open them to Is find the Violet, golden ticket. Violet Beauregard. Um, not the bubblegum girl, the one with the with Violet. the uh, horses. Oh, was yes. it Violet? Was it Violet? No, you're right. No, no, Violet is the bubblegum girl. Yeah. In the in the in the John, they were talking Johnny again. In the Johnny version. Oh yeah. Of, <laughs> of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie, not not. Of his version of the trial. <laughs> yeah, his version of the trial turns out about as real as his version of Roald Dahl. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. No, no. So she, uh, that's what he did. She, and then that girl, so, yeah, it was her dad, the, the one with the horse. Oh, it's, like, it's killing me. How can I not name them all? It's Augustus oh. Gloop, Violet Beauregard, TV Stevie. Yes. Charlie. And then this fifth person. This girl with the pony. Whose name was, it was like. Daddy, I want a that's pony. Right. That's right. Yeah. I want the squirrels, Daddy. That's what happens yes. to her. She wants the squirrels. Yes, that's and then, right. No, then they try to shell her. Look, how much for the squirrels? It's, it's very that's good right. to see. They try to shell her and they throw her down the chute. And I cannot remember her name and it's killing me. It's killing me, right? I swear, if I suddenly burst out with her name later in the podcast, stick around, folks. It may happen. Then my, if, my, if my daughter suggests uh, expensive items, oh, Dad, come on. Look at that shop there, that lovely... <laughs> then I just go, Daddy, I want a pony. And then she looks at me funny. <laughs> Did you ever see that South African comic, Sean Griggs? Yes. He, he had a marvelous bit about his son asking him for stuff. And then he would kneel, kneel down, because his son's name was Damien. And then he'd kneel down and he'd say, Damien. Well, that is his name, not just because he's a little Satan. <laughs> say, Damien, in the words of the Rolling Stones can't always get what you want. <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. But anyway, cool. um, oh, where were we? Uh, yeah, good. We were, we oh, were yeah. there. You got it wrong. Oh, okay. The PepsiCo okay. company did, in fact, get sued by John Leonard, but not for the reasons I claimed. All right. Okay. So now my fact is, is a fascinating one. So the Scopes trial, uh, 1925, Tennessee. For me, Scope is literally just that rude magazine with the with the stars on the nipples from the 1980s. Oh, shucks. There's a fact I could have done. Do you remember? Do you remember? Like, I don't know if you were... Because I went to an all-boys school, so we, mm. were very, we were very hot on the porn. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the, the pornography was not allowed uh, <laughs> in apartheid government in, mm. like, the 1980s. Mm. Like, early 90s. I'm, like, standard five, standard six, mm. and the apartheid government is over now, 1992. Mm. And... Um, and then after that, like, instead of just having scope with the stars and the nipples, suddenly Hustler comes in. Yo! You know, a Hustler which showed, and this is their word, full beaver. Wow. Remember that? That's a throwback to the 1990s. Yeah, that, that thing changed my brother's life particularly. He used to sell them to his friends at a great markup. Wow. That's cool. Man, yeah. you know, that, that, that's a fact I could have done, speaking of scopes trial. Because uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, The People vs. Larry Flint. Larry Flint's the guy who right, started yeah, the yeah, absolutely. magazine. That Great is. movie. Wonderful movie. You know, you know, like we thought, uh, honestly, I don't know if you were the same as me, but when, when Dietz gave us this, I thought he was taking the piss. Because when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, O.J. Simpson, Michael Jackson. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, you know, Oscar Pistorius. Mm. And then what? Like actual murders. And then it turns out... There's, There's a lot of really lot. interesting interesting trials, as you say, stuff we hadn't even thought of. Yeah, no, Scopes, I'm surprised you it doesn't jump straight to the top of your mind. Maybe, maybe if you tell me about it. it 1925, might. Tennessee. It was also known as the Monkey Trial. Uh, because a chap called someone, Scopes, a teacher in Tennessee, mm -hmm. uh, was, um, yes, he was uh, arrested for teaching evolution in school oh my word yeah uh, so and uh, uh, my fact is he didn't even teach biology 
I literally know nothing about oh, this. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, it I was a know. turning point trial in the United States about the teaching of evolution in schools. Uh, Tennessee actually banned it. And um, they still, it's still banned there, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> They're like, it's fine if you, of, if, you, if you marry your sister. <laughs> there's, no, there's no repercussions there. And <laughs> Tennessee, isn't that Memphis, Mr. Elvis Presley? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. where Memphis is, yeah. Is that uh, I do like that song "Walking in Memphis." Uh, <laughs> we talking. We always Elvis gonna, we always Presley's, default Elvis Presley's, back to Elvis um, Presley's last words. I'm gonna go read on the toilet. Really? Like, read? Who goes to go read on the <laughs> toilet? <laughs> shame. Was that his yeah, last words? Yeah, oh, apparently. Shame. I mean, those were his last words to anyone else. His real last words were, "Oh, this is bigger than I thought." <laughs> I do want to go to Memphis, uh, and I like that song "Walking in Memphis," and you know. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, I. I. I have an uh, um, affection for sort of the Bible belters, but uh, a lot of people don't. But I sort of. Are <laughs> oh, their sisters and brothers do? <laughs> They've got a lot of affection for their fellow Bible belters. Yeah. So Scopes trial. Um, he was arrested for teaching evolution in schools, 1925. Okay. Um, and they. So what was he? he wasn't you saying teacher. he wasn't a biology teacher? Didn't he teach was, biology. But he no. was teaching evolution to the kids. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's my fact. Um, and this was, it was called the Scopes trial. It was um, later called the Monkey. And then what happened in this trial? What was the thing? Was uh, he... he was uh, acquitted. He was found oh. not guilty, arrested, and then found uh, that it was okay to teach evolution in schools. And that got a bit of a domino effect all over the United Even States. Even in Tennessee. Amazing. 1925, eh? 1925. I mean, let's be honest. Darwin was what? 1700s? Yeah, no, no, no. His book, uh, when he finally published it, it was because I mean, the whole yeah. um, Gal Galapagos voyage was yeah, he in the like 30s. Yeah, and then he it, brought yeah. out about the 70s and 1870. And the, the, then the follow up book, The Descent of Man, was about 10 years later, hmm. maybe, maybe less. Uh, but then by then it had gained a lot of ground. But then you'd had the famous debate between Huxley and the bishop, right. and uh, things were gaining momentum and so this is 25 1925 in uh yeah so it's about 50 or 60 it's two generations after you know it's not yeah. i mean for them to finally be bringing you know we were talking earlier um in uh, in the last week podcast uh, the space one about about how we were taught newtonian physics at school instead yeah. of einstein physics it's a similar thing and how how does it take a couple generations for a thing to be taught in in school yes. once it's already kind of established I, I, knowledge I, I in the rest of the world. I do still think you've got to start with Newton. You've got to start with the apple falling to the floor and measuring no, the no. speed. No, so, so no. My God. So Newton's still accurate on Earth. <laughs> you know, it's it's the bit where they do the interplanetary, like oh, the planets are steady and static in the atmosphere in in space because they have gravitational effect upon one another. Uh, that's the that's the Newton plus uh, uh, when you you've gone very big, but if you go very small, nuclear physics. I think they've got their own little rules there as well. I don't think they obey. Mr. I Newton wouldn't know. Stuff. The maths to me is insane. But um, okay, let's uh, let's Scopes. focus on this on Evolution. scope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, th that sounds like a believable thing. It it is, as I say, within that realms of two generations. Mm. Uh, you're saying he's he wasn't a biology teacher. It doesn't matter. You know, you tell people that we evolved from monkeys off of a 70-year-old book. That That's probably pretty fair. And I'd imagine that Tennessee would get up in arms about it. All your facts seem to be aligning with my bigoted assumptions, Ryan. <laughs> so, so show me why I'm wrong. Well, I am telling the truth, and you said I'm telling okay, the good. truth, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, interesting story. It became quite... It became the, the 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 pinnacle trial of what is seen as science versus religion great debate in the United States. The turning point and ushering in uh, um, the teaching of evolution in schools. Well, what I love now is America is absolutely going backwards. You know, they they recently had a trial where they wanted where people were were trying to ban books, and Jeez, other people like, had to like fight to stop them from banning yeah. books. You know? Well, Kansas tried to or did bring in the teaching of alongside evolution intelligent design and that's when you had the reaction of the flying spaghetti monster little cult as like oh, you can teach about all sorts of uh, weird things which one cannot see well we just invent a religion 
in uh, celebration of this new law in Canada. But it was, it was a protest sort yeah, of. Yeah. So, uh, so you're saying you're saying that uh, it became known as the monkey trial. Mm, mm. Yes, but what's interesting about it? So it it was, and then they made a movie about it, which uh, got it was kind of the pro science people making a movie about it. But it was a fiction movie and, <laughs> and a hell of a story. People. Yeah, I love how you're like. No, no, Ryan. What we call them is well, the, the, the regular logical evolution. people who who read books. Well, those, those who were sort of on on the this side of it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's it's quite emotional, and and a lot of religious people didn't like the way that certain religious people were portrayed in the movie, as yeah, as, as closed-minded bigots and and all of that stuff. But so, I can't so that's imagine why they would do that. That's what the trial started to oh, signify. I see. But it started because the town wanted some publicity. Uh, they said, let's. Let's do this out of, as a publicity stunt to no, get people joking. talking about blah, blah, Tennessee. I still don't know the name of the bloody trial. And we call it the monkey man trial. And, and uh, they had him. So he didn't teach biology. He was maths. And um, what was the other subject? Maybe science. But certainly he didn't have to ev involve biological evolution at all or Darwinism at all. But like he's, he's like, oh, I guess I mentioned it. Well, can we have you arrested? Yeah, no, really, this was yeah. all planned. Yeah, and a PR so that um, they could put this place on the map. You know how you you led with the whole. Crazy. Oh, this is this is about this. That's the most fascinating aspect about this trial. That mm. it was all like a PR. It was a PR stunt, but then it grew into something very symbolic and significant and dramatic. I mean, as PR stunts go, I thought the most significant PR stunt was when David Blaine had himself suspended over the Thames River. For forty days, and you had to try and sit in a box. Uh, I, I, you know that was a pretty good PR stunt, but this one sounds better than that. Yeah, I mean, if it, you it could remember way the name bigger of the, than they ever. Yeah, if you could remember the name of the town, I would say it was a very successful PR stunt. Yeah, I, mean, I can't. I'll have <laughs> yeah, to Google yeah. it. But clearly, it wasn't as successful as maybe yeah. we thought. I saw this is a segue, but I, I saw David Blaine live. Eh? Did you? Yeah. You're not supposed to. He's supposed to be. Oh, senior right. here. Senior there. Yeah, it was my, my mate Anthony Chaty. He bought us tickets to Bidvest's end of year dinner at Santon Convention Center. It was like a thousand people, and they put on a show just for that event, you oh, know. Wow. And uh, they brought out at half time like a thousand medium rare fillet steaks all at the same time. It's quite a quite a feat I mean, in I that know, kitchen. I know Anthony. He, uh, yeah, he, Anthony. He, yeah. he lent us uh, his his. Very impressive flat in Hyde Park once to, yes. uh, to film a, a sketch. He's a Lovely good friend man. of the yeah. com comedians, man, yeah, yeah, Anthony. Man. And he, uh, so I, um, my ex and I went along dinner with him and his wife, and it, it, he bought the table, you know, and it was great. And then at some point in the show, the announcer just went, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Blaine. <laughs> he was in the crowd. That's and insane. How you guys doing? Was he dressed right. like a waiter? Did he? Was he dressed like a waiter? And then he... Oh, he's not a waiter anymore. Look, That's his first trick. I saw him do some crazy things. Okay. Like he said, "I'm a bit thirsty. Do you mind if I have a bottle of your water here?" And he took a, a liter of water and downed it. Like cool. Okay. I've done that with beer and before. Then he did later. He did another liter and he downed. I think he downed three bottles, maybe four. And then later he did. He showed that a few things. That a few things. And then this is a bit gross. But then there was a bit of a fire on stage, and then he put it out. By vomiting water on it. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking right. weird. Yeah, that is a bit strange, isn't it? <laughs> now that you think about I'd it. I'd rather not be extremely wealthy and just do comedy and podcasts. Right. Have to Here's put... the next fact. Fuck. Yes. Okay, so we were talking about how we're, we're going to distract ourselves, right? We're going to do all these kind of strange, different, we're not going to do the murder trials. Ha <laughs> ha, here's the ultimate oh, murder fuck. trial. All right, during his murder trial, Ted Bundy, this is my fact, Ted Bundy represented himself and even cross-examined himself on stand. Good good Lord, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, did they not make a movie out of it recently with the dude from High School Musical? I have no idea. Uh, was he... What, like Zac called, Efron? Yeah. And the um, the judge's f closing comments were, is the name of the movie, despicably evil and completely vicious. You may be right. Fuck, you may be right. So oh, actually, I've actually got his, I've got the judge's closing. Although, I mean, to be fair, the judge's closing. Did he things, not have a lawyer? No, the judge's closing comments are not what you're saying. So maybe maybe it was a different uh, serial killer that you yeah. you maybe that you have. Uh, so you're just saying Ted Bundy represented himself and cross-examined himself. And he cross-examined himself, yeah. 
I would have. I, I think the court would have not allowed that. They would have said that's absurd. <laughs> they would have not allowed him to cross-examine himself. Are you um, sure? I mean, this is America, right? They allowed even, the a even PR in America, stunt. They allowed a PR stunt to become a trial. Ted Bundy didn't have a legal representation. Yeah, he represented himself. Yeah. Maybe no one wanted to. No, I'm sure somebody would. Although, no, well, to be fair, nobody to wants to represent someone. Trump. So, really? Yeah, nobody wants to. Represent. Seriously? No. Well, exactly. Ask yourself a question, right? With Trump, where is, are all the expensive still lawyers? Still the the uh, impeachment situation. Well, all of his legal stuff. Where are the expensive lawyers? Where are they all? They should are. be queuing up around the block to represent Trump, but they they're not there. Where are they? Reputation. Oopsie. Not so good. Maybe Ted Bundy had a similar reputation to, to Donald Trump. But the state will appoint one. That's what they say when they read you your rights mm. in all the movies. But you um, don't have to accept one, right? Oh, right. Anyway, but just yeah, so I'm saying, no, I, I, no, I don't think he represented himself. All right. Here's the deal. He did indeed. Wow. And uh, he subjected the court to these surreal kind of third person cross examinations where he referred to himself as Mr. Bundy. So he would put himself on the stand all kind of confidant, like nonchalant, and then he would cross examine himself. You know, in these kind of lengthy cross examinations. Um, Yeah, uh, John Henry, Henry Brown, who was one of several attorneys that Bundy worked with just briefly. wrote a book and he said that that Bundy was just determined to represent himself. He said it was like fatally narcissistic. He believed that he was, that no one could represent him like he could represent him. Um, And yeah, to give you some idea of how that went, uh, Judge Cowart sentenced him to the electric chair. (laughs) (laughs) It didn't go, it didn't go so well, but you know how you said uh, Judge Cowart, like what he said in his final closing statements. And I've, I've actually, I've got Judge Cowart's final statements here. He said, after sentencing him to the electric chair, Judge Coward very strangely said, take care of yourself, young man. I say that to you sincerely, take care of yourself. It's a tragedy for this court to see such a total waste, I think, of humanity that I've experienced in this court. You're a bright young man. You would have made a wonderful lawyer, and I would have loved to have you practice Good in front of me. Lord. But you went another way, partner. So the That's judge what he said. said, yeah. That's what okay, he said. No, then yeah. I, uh, maybe it's not the Zac Efron one. Viciously evil and totally despicable something. Yeah. Yeah, My so, bloody so word. With, with Ted Bundy, the, the closing was he was impressed with him as a lawyer. Clearly an intelligent man, but he was like, yep, still a pretty despicable killer. I mean, look, the despicable evil part could have been another part of this exact same thing. Because he did sentence the guy to the electric chair, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah sure. If you're going to go, electric chair is probably That's like your nest. least favorite way, right? Oh, it's terrible, I'm sure. Yeah. Give him the chair. <laughs> Good the lord. Chair. The old that one, yeah. eh? They used to do the thing where they put the, the black hood on their head. That must have been awkward. Oh, so you so... don't know when he's gonna pull yeah. the Has anybody got the black black <laughs> no, no, you know, the judge had to do it. He had to put a black oh! hood on his head if he was gonna declare the death penalty. Which is kind of unkind. You make him look like a fucking prick. You mean <laughs> like with a bit of just before they pull the thing or, or No, no, as at he's the reading trial. out the sentence, yeah. So Come so, over here. So you'd watch oh, your yeah. you'd watch your judge. And he's sitting there and he's reading out your, your, your thing and, and then he'd pause and he'd pick up a what's for all intents and purposes a duck. <laughs> and he'd put the duck on his head and he'd say, yeah, laugh it up, bitch. You're going to the electric That's chair. Just, is it in America? Or it yeah, yeah, no, in America, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine like Mr. T getting the death sentence? <laughs> Don't put that thing in my head, you fool. I know parents with a black thing on my head. Don't get, get that thing away from me. I don't wear that thing. Mr. T, you've been sentenced to death. No, I am a pity the fool. I don't wear that thing on my head. I, th- I think it's important. I think I think because by making the judge do something ridiculous as he's sentencing you to death, maybe he thinks, ooh, I'm not so sure I want to wear the stupid hood. <laughs> you have to be really determined that you want to sentence someone to death, you know, when you when you put the hood on your head. All right, well, I think that's, uh, <laughs> we're having such a fun time. Let's talk about rape. Um, the oh, joke, holy joke, shit, joke, man. joke. No, it's, it's <laughs> like, like there was a piece of me that was, oh, I'm excited, I'm enjoying myself, and then dead inside. <laughs> Just instantly dead inside. Apologies, folks. Not funny, not funny at all. But uh, high profile trials, 2005. Oh, um, 
chap. He wasn't yet leader of the ANC. Uh, then ah. he became leader of the ANC. I mean, it's an important trial because it involves a soon-to-be president, right? Mm, yeah. So, uh, lady, which her, her pseudonym was known as Quezi at the trial, accused uh, uh, Jacob Zuma of rape. He'd known her. They were... I think, in fact, her dad was on Robben Island with him. Yeah, her so, dad was his friend. and Yeah, yeah. she even called him Uncle Malume and stuff. And so he was uh, acquitted because it was found to be consensual. And Reedy Tlabi wrote a book called Quezi after that. But uh, trial was in, what, 2006? Because the, the, the thing was mm. lodged, 2005, trial 2006. So 2007... She was um, exiled to the Netherlands, her and her mom, uh, because someone in her family, w- their house was torched or something. So it was getting oh, very, so you think very... she had to run away. She yeah. wasn't But there, yeah. she did return to KZN 2016, where she still lives today. That's my fact. Hmm. Crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. At this stage, it's it's very difficult to know. You know, there's so much, so many accusations around what uh, what Zuma's done and what, uh, you know, I mean, the fact that we aren't sitting here in the darkness is already an indication <laughs> ah! of, of something of a miracle that has occurred post Zuma. Um, it's a diff- yeah, it's a difficult thing to talk about and it's a difficult thing to to understand because, you know, the assumption is always that once somebody's gone to trial. They are in fact innocent if they are found innocent, right? Like that's that's the point. Mm. And the trial is supposed to be is supposed to be conclusive. I don't think anybody in South Africa who who isn't a Jacob Zuma fanboy is prepared to believe that he's innocent at that stage. But yeah, so it's a wow. The podcast has gotten to this this really kind of dark. I was so it was such fun and and jovial, and then I had to bring up the quasi trial. <laughs> yeah, you just had to bring it. I mean, it it involves our former president, right? And it's yeah. only one of multiple cases Jeez. that he's going to have. Like he's been sent to jail. This man, like he's I been know. sent to jail, released because he's innocent because he's sick. He's going to go back at some stage, one would assume. Even he, if he, he never goes us, to jail again, he might spend many, many more days of his life in a courthouse. Yeah, um, and, but he claims now he's going to come back. So he, he was released. Even into politics. Yeah, into politics. So he, cla- he claims he was released because he's sick. Now he's back into politics, which doesn't sound like very sick behavior to me. <laughs> Sounds very shabby or shaky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I feel a he- healing coming on. I mean, I would hope that we don't know what's happened to Quezzy. I would hope that she's living a life somewhere really nice, and that that she's been able to move on and get the the help that she needs for this kind of thing. Um, KwaZulu Natal would not be the place to do that. Mm-mm. If I was not a fan of Jacob Zuma, I would live anywhere in the world other than Kwasi Natal, quite honestly. Have um, you heard this crazy fact about the political assassinations in KZN? There's like one every three days. <laughs> but like even municipal leaders and stuff. I, I, like, would you like to run for mayor of this little... No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I, I do not want to any political... No. All right. Um, I'm saying it's true. Why not? Let's go with it, Ryan. Let's... Uh, wow. Um, this is a very sad, dickish lie of me. It's very sad, and I'm being dick. Uh, she did move back to KZN. And then I ended by saying where she's uh, living. As she did. She passed away. I did. You know, in, you know I thought you know. I thought to myself, mm. I'm pretty sure she's passed away. And then I thought, Ryan wouldn't bring this up. This is a happy, fun fucking she, podcast, so Ryan. Awful. You I'm fucking a, asshole. I'm going to drink myself. Anyway, good. We're running out of time because, you know, I joked about the load shedding, but Blaze literally just came out and went like, it, do it's, it. it's imminent, yeah. Do it. So, all right. So, what we're going to do is, um, I'll do this and then we'll jump to our multiple choices. Um, uh, so, after being found guilty at the Nuremberg Trials, this is my fact, mm-hmm. the Nuremberg Trials, the ultimate celebrity trial, right? Like, this was, <laughs> was back in the day. Uh, Hermann Goering committed suicide just before he was like he was sentenced to be executed he committed suicide just before he was to be executed because he believed that hanging was a tacky and undignified death he said he would have faced a firing squad but he's not prepared to face hanging that was his reason for committing suicide how did and how did he do it so uh, is your fact the reason that he gave 
No, my fact is that whole thing. How did he take his own... I mean, he may not have, Ryan, for all you know. Yeah, I think I think that rings a bell, actually. That rings a bell. I think I watched the miniseries called Nuremberg. Yeah. I'm going to say that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it is true. It is true. He took uh, he took poison a couple of days before he was supposed to be hanged because he believed that it was undignified to be hanged. I wonder if anybody gave Saddam Hussein the same option. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot that's quite interesting about that trial, about the Nuremberg trial. It's the first time that people ever stood trial for gross human rights abuses. Uh, it's the first time they stood trial for genocide. In fact, the the term geno- genocide was only coined in 1944 by a Polish-born lawyer uh, called Rafael Lemkin, who who developed that word. Uh, to describe, because genos is from the Greek word tribe and side, obviously, for killing. Ah. So, yeah, so so he developed this word to explain the killing of a of a population group. So it's the very first time that uh, that people were ever put on trial for that. Gee and not, not all of them, not all of them were, were actually found guilty at the end of the day. I think three or four of them, three or four of the 20, like, got off. They were, they were acquitted. Um, but uh, Goering was not one of them and he was sentenced to hang and and uh, and he dodged the bullet. <laughs> wow. If he was supposed to go for the bullet, he wouldn't have dodged it. Wow. Anyway, there you go. I got a lovely little fact quick mm. for you. The musical Chicago is uh, <laughs> one of the stories of one of the girls, Roxy, in Chicago, based on a true life uh, story. Uh, based on. I think it is. Not, I think not, it, so yeah. it's not, it's, you know, like based on a true story. It's yeah, not a yeah. true story. It's based on a true story. Yeah, there's a lot of these things you see these days based on a true story. It's like, you know, we had that fact in, in, uh, in our action movies one about Rambo. The first Rambo movie is in fact based on a true story. It really is. And, um, so that sort of shows you how loosely these things are sometimes yeah. based on true story. But yeah, <laughs> so I can, yeah, yeah, so I can imagine. I can imagine it was, yeah. Well, the fact is true. Uh, by, uh, Roxy, the character Roxy, based on uh, Bueller May Annan, born in Kentucky, and then uh, married a chap in, the first husband in Kentucky. They soon divorced. And then she met Albert uh, Al Annan, um, a car mechanic. They moved to Chicago. Al Annan. Isn't that, isn't Al- that the Alcoholics Anonymous Al- Association? Al- <laughs> Al- Albert Allen. Uh, they moved to Chicago where they got married. Um, but this is very, very funny. On The murder on the th- 1924, 3rd of April, in the married couple's bedroom. I don't know if you've seen Chicago the musical. I have, I have. Uh, uh, listen to this. Married couple's bedroom. And Anne shot Calstead. So Calstead is a chap she met at the laundromat and start began an affair with. So in the married couple's bedroom, an Anne shot Calstead in the back. According to her initial story, they had bought drinking. They had been drinking wine, which Calstead had brought over, and then it got into an argument. There was a alter- she changed the story like three times. It was like, no, I told him I was pregnant, and then he's like, he's not, you're not if having you're my baby. If you're going to cheat on your husband, is it going to be with a guy you met in a laundromat? It feels like make better choices with your life, lady. Like, you can't go and meet somebody in a laundromat. This is not the high stakes kind of game that they've made it out to be in Chicago, right? It's this isn't the give them the old razzle dazzle. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, the, the, the musical is so out of this world and, and crazy and fun. It's completely based on, on, on true facts around Chicago at the time. She then changed the story three times and then said self defense and was acquitted by a hotshot lawyer named Richard Gere. Give him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who had a hamster up his ass, as far as I've read on the internet. <laughs> so Chicago's based on true stuff, man. That's madness. No, that is you, that is a, a, a strange right. aside. Do you want to jump to the multiple choice? Oh, yes. We're, at, we're literally at like five minutes before load shedding. This is the low quality kind of shit you get. Oh, yeah, load when, shedding. When it comes to load shedding, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, mine was going to be about the Ravonia trial, but it's more about... Uh, no, go for it. Go for did it. you know that the Ravonia trial didn't happen in Ravonia? No, because the the place that where they yeah, found that's Lily's Leaf Farm. Lily's Leaf yeah. Farm, yeah. Uh, which which of these was not present uh, when at that final meeting of the ANC or Contumacies where when they um, were arrested? Was it 
remember this, remember so, this so, 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 so hang on, hang on. We're talking about the Ravonia treason trial. Let's just take a minute. I know we're in mm. a bit of a rush. No, no, for but sure. We're talking about the Ravonia treason trial. It's called Ravonia because Lily's Leaf Farm, where is they were arrested, is in Ravonia, Johannesburg. I used to work in the same street. I didn't even know that the bloody guest house was there. It's now I a mean, guest house and a museum. Yeah, but the, the, the Grand is in the it's same right street. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> the Grand Strip Club. I never went there either. Anyway, no. No, I didn't either, but I keep getting told how good the food is. This is not a punt for the grand, you <laughs> people. <laughs> but if you guys hey, do you want a sponsor, <laughs> Ryan will take his clothes off for you every day of the week for 300 rand a night. Um, no, so 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 they were arrested, and that's why it was called the Ravonia Treason Trial. And then a bunch of people were, were taken to trial. And and you're you're saying some of these people weren't even at Lily's Leaf. One of these, one of these, one people, of these people wasn't. One of these for multiple yeah. choice time. One of these four names wasn't wasn't there. Mm. So we had Ahmed Katrada, Walter Sisulu, Nelson Mandela, and Gavin Mbeki. They weren't at Lily's Leaf during the arrest. Mm. Huh. So I mean, they all definitely stood trial. There's no Walter doubt about Sisulu, that. Ahmed could try to Nelson Mandela govern and Becky. Yeah. Um I know that they all stood trial. Yeah. Um Yeah, Walter Sisulu, like his so so him, he had his moment on the stay on the stand and apparently the entire court was was like wowed by him. They were like he's really small, like uneducated man with this really intense kind of passion and very well spoken kind of diction. Apparently the entire court was, was absolutely blown away by him. Wow. Um yeah, so I mean, Governor and Becky got in got in real trouble because because I mean, essentially, like he there was a lot of there was a lot of like fact around the fact that he was guilty. Like he was he was basically like condemned before he even got there. Really, um, I'm gonna. I mean, Nelson Mandela got arrested. He got arrested at the arrest site in Kozilin Natal, right? That was, that's the, that's, we've got a, a monument there. So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say Nelson Mandela. I mean, a lot of people, yeah, yeah, a lot of people would be surprised you didn't include Carl Niehaus on this list. <laughs> but, obviously, but obviously, Carl Niehaus is the only one that believes he was at the treason trial. Uh, in fact, uh, he said his mom died uh, the week before so that he didn't have to go, but he had to. Anyway, that is a seriously South African politics in joke because Carl Niehaus has claimed that his mom has died before falsely to try and uh, fleece really? money out of people. Good yeah, grief. So Carl, he, Carl Niehaus was the spokesman for Jacob Zuma. Yes, 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 yes. No, I know, I know about Carl. Anyway, but um, a bit of a nutter. I'm going to say Nelson Mandela. He wasn't, he wasn't at Lee's Leaf. Damn, you know your history. Yeah. Yes, he was quite right. Howick is where he was arrested. Mm. Uh, driving a Merc, I think. Uh, it, it, it's a beautiful scene in the movie which i still haven't seen and i want to see the movie but i think he's like uh he gets out the car he sees the cops and then he just says uh somebody looking for me <laughs> that's a cool thing to say yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that is a, yeah that, that's that's as cool and calm as you can yeah. be i would have shat my pants <laughs> <laughs> oh, please don't arrest me i beg you yeah, yeah. but that's why i'm not like the last action hero Nelson Mandela is, right? And they were going to change venue, man. It was their last meeting at Lily's Leaf. Day, and top of the agenda was, uh, where are we going to meet from now on? <laughs> <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those kind of awkward points in history, isn't it? Um, all right. I mean, I wish we could leave it, leave it on your multiple choice because I really liked it. Um, but mine, mine is about the Salem witch trials, which wow, is wow, kind of, I love that. Yeah, they're the oldest celebrity. I would have trials. done the, the guy at Scopes trial. I would have, <laughs> in, I would have Salem witched him. I would have burned him. Yeah. So the Salem witch trials, um, basically, a lot of women were were put up uh, on on charge for being witches, and the main reason, like that, many people were 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 eventually sentenced and quite often to death, was because they allowed what was called spectral. Um, uh, evidence which is that I didn't see her doing this bad thing I saw her spirit good I felt, lord I felt the impacts of her spirit on my life wow yeah so that that was allowed as the trial and this went on for several months did and they call were, it spectral yeah they called it spectral uh, testimony yeah yeah and then and then so so many many women wound up getting charged and sentenced and all the rest of it and and hung for this thing um 
And at the end of the day, the Salem witch trials were only called off for which of these reasons? Mm. Because all the witches had been caught. Uh, because they ran out of money. Because of the conscience of those prosecuting. Or because the governor of Massachusetts' wife was accused of being a witch. Oh, wow. Oh, man. I mean, I remember seeing a documentary because it is a shocker on the blight of uh, Christian history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, 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 they are none not a of those Christian, usually. There's a like, lot usually of, the you whole guys thing's are chill, quite yeah. shocking. Yeah. But uh, the, 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 the thing that kind of... Because I think the Puritans in some ways, from what I see in history, did quite a lot of good. But there's that whole Salem thing. Um, but apparently it was one maniac sort of pastor of a one little community that went berserk and he was a bit deranged i mean that's yeah rather than an entire christian culture that's i'm sure what you were Mm. told yeah Yeah. (laughs) so but but i would have the reason i was hoping you'd come up with is because that preacher was arrested or he was told to step down but man so that's great. So the conscience of the people prosecuting the governor's wife out of, was accused. They, 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 yeah, they ran out of money. They caught, they caught all the witches. They ran out of money. The conscience of the prosecutors, or because they arrested the governor of Massachusetts' wife for being a witch. I'm tempted to go with the governor's wife, but I'm going to go with the conscience of the prosecutors. Because you want to believe in the good of people, I right? do. You should have stuck with your gut. No! It's absolutely. Bugger! Yeah. No, yeah, you yeah. the so so the winner of this court case. <laughs> the governor episode. of the province of Massachusetts, his name was Sir William Phipps, and he allowed this hysteria to continue until Lady Mary Phipps, his wife, was accused of witchcraft. And he immediately went, No, 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 no. The spectral thing is nonsense. You can't say that my wife living lying in bed next to me is projecting her spirit out into the into society and causing all of this evil. This is ridiculous. End of this. But they'd hung a bunch of people for that exact like thing before so that's oh, how that, the, is so that is how the salem witch trials came to an end fucking horrifying and this and in quite terms of, dark... terms of this episode yes i declare the in <laughs> yeah. favor of warren robertson <laughs> the winner this and damages big... to be paid uh, in the amount of two more beers from woodstock <laughs> breweries shrine will pay for i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure deets when he was imagining this was like expecting a lot of michael jackson jokes <laughs> but like even when you start delving into the Michael Jackson jokes, you know, it's all dark, it's all evil. There's a reason these people are on trial. There's a reason these things are yeah. Just absolutely terrible. But, but how many Click ladies? Like, how many witches? How many? Oh, Please hundreds, tell me it's like literally four. hundreds. Yeah. Stop it. No, the youngest person accused of being a witch was four years old. And and she said she told them as a four year old that her mom was doing things that that made her a witch. So while she was on trial for seven months, this four-year-old, they hung her mom. So, you know, this thing was as so dark. So this was hectic. I, I thought it got to dark like, as it no, gets. it was only about like, it got bad, but there's eight, eight or nine no. or ten women. I mean, maybe maybe they only executed two dozen, but there's, this was hundreds of women oh, are accused of being oh, witches. Yeah, it went berserk, really like, eh? Yeah, I know. It was, it, was, it was dark. Yeah, it was. See what happens when you go too far from the Archbishop of Canterbury? You must stay close to the Puritans. Yes, I'm sure that's what King George would have said at the same time. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much Lovely. for joining us. Court Please cases, review it on Apple. Ones. Click like. Give it a star rating on Spotify. Join us on YouTube. You guys are fantastic. We love each and every single one of you. Yes. And one day when we're love. billionaires, we'll buy you guys a beer. Go back from the closing. Oh, from the closing. Ending, sure. Ending. Just stop. Just okay. Yeah, stop it. Boom. Thank you very much, guys. This has been fantastic. And thank you to each of you that have joined us here today. We appreciate every single one of you. Please Mm. click like on this video. Go and share this with your friends. Uh, Review it on Apple. Click a star on Spotify. And when we have 10,000 followers, we'll take each and every single one of you out for beers. Because believe me, we know your names. Thank you very much for listening. we will. We'll have a party on our yacht in the Mediterranean. (laughs) You can come. And you guys guys can come. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye.